Hi there, this is Brian Terrian from the Disability Digest with some information that will help you secure your Social Security Disability Income. Regardless if you're still working full-time, these are amazing practices to put in place uh, because you never know when you're going to need them, unfortunately, or if you're going through the application process, or definitely if you're already approved, this will protect you in the event that you're reviewed. So I have 10 points I want to share with you. These are nine points of things that we have uncovered in our 17 years of experience in working with individuals of things in their medical records that shouldn't be. So want to make sure you don't have those. And then the last point I want to cover with you is what to say and do when you go to your doctor's visits. So the first thing is um, it's important to understand that all of your medical records, according to this uh, Cures Act, are all expected to be in one place for you. So you have access to your medical records so that you can go in and you can review these. And as a general practice, what you'll learn in points one through nine is you definitely want to review these after each and every appointment um, so that you can make sure that the information that you have provided is really consistent with you. The second key point is, um, and these links that I'm sharing with you are up on the screen, is that according to uh, reliable sources right now, you have about 15.7 minutes in your uh, doctor's office with a primary care. And the primary care, in large part, influences your ability to get your disability benefits and keep them. So you need to make sure that that time counts All right so here's some of the things that you want to look for in your uh, medical records and these are in no particular order um, but mistakes and basic information like your name your address your phone number phone number we even seen the date of birth wrong um, when you look down your medication list make sure that the names of the medications the dosage and the frequency are all in line with what they should be. A common thing that happens is you may have been taken off a medication or switched out one, but it's still on your list. And if you have communicated to your doctor that you don't want to be taking a medication for health reasons, let's say it's bad for your liver, you want to make, make certain, excuse me, that that communication is in your medical records and so when social security or other insurance companies come in and look they'll just say oh well they stopped taking it if they took it they'd be great so you need the reason why you made the change that same strategy of communicating your why could be used for like physical therapy oftentimes people go to that and it doesn't work for them it makes them in more pain or uh, procedure or surgery commonly for back surgery um, allergy medication uh, you want to make sure that that is definitely right so that you're not prescribed some med um, that's not going to work for you because of allergies um, outdated medical records uh, diagnoses from the past make sure all of that is uh, current um, another common problem is duplicate records. You might have duplicate records of one appointment or several appointments. Why is this a problem? One example is if your medical record is requested by Social Security as you go through the approval process, which they should be, um, and there's two sets of medical records in there, it makes it difficult, believe it or not, for the Social Security examiner um, to go through and find what they need. So the cleaner your records are, the more accurate, the better. Um, ah, we have found other patient files mixed in with current patient files. Busy offices, somebody does something wrong, should have gone there, it went here. So just make sure it's you. Um, and the severity of conditions, this is an important one. 
if you have, for example, a brain health diagnosis for a depression, and your depression has been marked as mild, but it actually should be severe. So in your medical records, it's saying mild, but it's actually severe. You know it's been severe because you've been tested and informed that. That's really important uh, as you go through to get and keep your disability benefits that everything uh, is in line. Also, I would expect how you're treated. I'm not a doctor, but I would expect somebody that's going to be treated differently um, with that. Um, we talked about discontinued um, medication, but that's worth repeating because that's a common one. Uh, your test results. Make sure that your test results are all in your medical records. Usually what happens is a test is done and it's not brought in to the medical record. So those are some of the, the key things that you want to make sure that you are looking for on a consistent basis um, in your file. One more point to cover and then I'll give you some uh, resources uh, at the end to help you with all this. So when you go to your doctors, what you do in that 15.7 minute visit is critical. Many people just go and they listen to them and they leave. That's not what I'm suggesting. I am suggesting that you advocate for yourself, that you drive the process and get the best return on investment for the time that you're in there. And here's some of the things that you should be, could be doing. One is document everything. A daily journal. There's wonderful resources out there. You can just use a plain old paper notebook. And you want to document your conditions so that you understand like your level of pain, how much you're sleeping. Maybe you used to be able to sit for 15 minutes and now it's only 10. All of, of these things um, that are changing the variables in your life. Yeah, it might sound like work, but this is your income. This is your disability income. Uh, so this is what you need to do to protect it. And it doesn't take that long. And if you do it right, you can work with your doctor with the mindset to get better. Um, so here's how that works. With your information that you've documented, when you go to that appointment, you want to write down or put in the patient portal in advance notification about your limitations. So that would be sit, stand, bend, stoop. Here's the key point. Most people, unless they've been following us and they've learned, don't understand how to clearly, concisely communicate that they are they qualify for disability. And it's the same when you go to your doctors. You don't want to talk about the conditions, ideally. You can, but you want to talk about the limitations. Now, this doctor is treating you. And if on a piece of paper or in the portal you put... I'm standing for 15 minutes. I can sit for 10 minutes. I'm not able to bend below my my belt buckle. Uh, I'm not able to lift a gallon of milk, which is eight pounds. I, I'm sleeping maybe four or five hours. So that information is provided to the doctor. And then from that information, you can work with them and say, listen, doc, I, I'm here to get better, which most people are. Uh, that does one aspect of the treatment process, but the point that I'm making is that when Social Security comes through your records, they're going to see the limitations. And it's those limitations that will help you get and keep your benefits. Now, maybe you just have uh, brain health issues or, or something that's non-physical and your limitations are different. It could be light, it could be loud noises, it could be crowds that you're not able to be around. It could be uh, people of authority or different sense. But whatever it is, follow the information that we have here at the Disability Digest and we'll help you tighten it up, keep it current for you. Um, here at the Disability Digest, we do this work, type of work, to help people get, keep, and maximize their disability benefits. We definitely encourage you to subscribe so you can stay tuned in. Join our live events. If you have questions, you can call in or submit your question and get it answered by our panel of experts. But the best way we can help you is if you join us as a member because we can give you a customized approach at no charge to get you the right information, the right contacts, so you can get from where you are now to where you want to go as fast as possible. I hope you've found this helpful. Stay tuned for more. Make it a great day.